everyone, through here, welcome to today's presentation. So today's presentation is going to look at this really fascinating topics, the data vault versus the data lakes. That said, for the agenda, we're going to look at what data lakes are, their definition, their history, and some of the characteristics of a data lake. A lot of people, a lot of data professionals are probably familiar with what a data lake is. Now, the data vault, we're going to look at what that is. It's a little bit more obscure. Some people might not have heard about the name data vault or might not be familiar with its characteristics or why it's relevant. So we're going to look at that today and dive a little bit deeper. Also, we're going to have an understanding, kind of a compare and a contrast of are they friends or are they foes? Should you use one or should you use the other or should you use both? And I think that's a very important conversation to have as people are thinking about data lakes versus data vault. And then last but not least, as always, we're going to look at some possibilities and where you can go from here. So this is the agenda we have for today. Let's dive right in. Now, uh, this is a diagram, a picture of a data lake that consists of the definition and its characteristics. So for the definition of the data lake, which you can see here on the screen, is a data lake is a system or a repository of data stored in its natural format, usually object blobs or files. A data lake is usually a single store of all the enterprise uh, data, including raw copies of source systems data, transformed data used for the task used for tasks such as reporting, visualization, advanced analytics, and machine learning. So this is going to be your Wikipedia definition of or what data lakes are. So if you think about an organization, and this is what this diagram is is, uh, is showing us here, your organization has uh, lots and lots of data sources, right? Coming from uh, CRM and ERP, the social media, uh, vendors they interact with. These are all the sources that an organization can get data from. Now, the concept of a data lake, when it actually came up, is why don't we uh, build this repository this area where we can dump all this data from all the sources in as raw of a format as possible so you know this is where the data lake is coming in that way we can have a single repository for analytics all right and this kind of uh, give birth to the term elt previously we had the etl extract transform load but in this case of a data lake it's saying let's extract the data just load it as we can in as raw of a format as we can. And then we're going to worry about transforming that later. And there was a good motivation behind this when this uh, topic came uh, to fruition with companies thinking, we don't want to lose data. Because when you did ETL before, you know, companies tend to, in the process of transformations, they tend to select data they want to keep and transform data. And so you can't really go back to history, to the single source of truth that you might have had. But the data lake solved that problem because, well, well, it proposed to solve that problem by saying that your data lake is going to be your dump of everything imaginable within the organization. And you can worry about analyzing that later. And this really made sense and came to fruition with the birth of technologies like Hadoop. Hadoop was really the technology that, you know, led to the sprawl of data lakes because Hadoop made sure that uh, storage was very cheap with HDFS and the commodity hardwares. Uh, with the advent of you know, S3 and, and, and blob storage and the commoditization of storage, uh, to be more specific, data lakes really, really came to their own. And so we see sources uh, dump into a data lake and worry about your machine learning and filtering uh, later. So this is really what brought data lake uh, into being. Um, you know, and the characteristics of data in the data lake would be semi-structured data. So unlike using a database or a data warehouse that is, you know, rows and columns and tables, a data lake does away with that, all right? Because you're basically storing files or storing data in a file system, you don't have to worry about the structure of that data when dumping into the data lake. And so we can see both structured and semi-structured data coming into play here, a lot of them typically being raw. Uh, schema on read. So you dump your data and you worry about the schema uh, when you're trying to consume. So that's really one of the characteristics of a data lake, schema on read. It works well with low storage. So if you think about having to store a lot of video files, text files, PDF, and all the kind of data that your organization can generate, 
you don't want to be putting this on an expensive appliance, right? Like Netiza or some place where it could be really expensive to get more storage on those appliances. So in this case, Hadoop made sense, right? It's cheap commodity hardware. Well, at least that's what the promise is. Uh, you can just dump data in there and worry about analysis later. All right. Agile, easy to reconfigure, uh, great for data scientists to come in, get all the data they want and, and be able to do the analysis. So guys, this is the characteristics and the definition of the data lake. And its goal was to support democratization of data, uh, supporting different formats like we see, uh, flexibility with schema, with the schema on read, advanced analytics can be processed on that because I mean, you have all your data in, in all your data set in one place and you can use Spark and all the advanced machine learning uh, to just target that data and do your processing. And you can scale horizontally. So if you need to scale and get more storage, just add more nodes to your Hadoop cluster or just buy more space on S3 or buy more space on, on Blob Storage, on, on Azure or, or GCP. And this is the promise of a data lake. Now, for the history about it, data lake is not new, right? Data lake really came in uh, with the birth of Hadoop and, and highlighted Hadoop here. So, you know, before Amazon launched uh, AWS, uh, Yahoo open source Hadoop, and I highlighted this because this move was really the move that really brought Hadoop into, uh, into the masses. Uh, Cloudera was formed in 2009. And you can see some of the histories. These are some of the interesting histories of uh, of the milestones within the, the idea of uh, Hadoop and the data lake. Um, Apache Hive was founded in 2010. And then uh, uh, John uh, Dixon, which I believe he, he gets credit for, for coining the term data lake, did that in about 2010. So that's been around for a while. Hortonworks was formed. Snowflake, which is kind of like the next generation of data lake. So Snowflake's still uses the idea of data lake even though they approach it from a whole different kind of mindset and i'm gonna check out my snowflake videos uh for that hive and presto aws athena and there's a lot of innovation going here so uh data lake usually is tied to this concept of big data and hadoop and the next generation of hadoop which we've seen which is like your snowflakes your uh, redshift and all the cloud processing platforms so that's a data lake. All right, now let's look at the data vault and the definition and some of the characteristics of a data vault. So if we just Google on Wikipedia and do a quick search, a uh, data vault, uh, you can see here, I put data vault and in bracket modeling. All right, and I'm gonna explain why that's very important. So the data vault modeling is a database modeling method that is designed to provide long-term historical storage of data coming in from multiple operational systems. It's also a method of looking at historical data that deals with issues such as auditing, tracing of data, loading speed, and resilience to change, as well as emphasizing the need to trace where all the data in the database comes, came from. So that's what the data vault is. It's a Wikipedia definition right there. You can go look at it. But if I was to summarize this and just say, what is the difference, which is what this video is trying to uh, expose on, what is the difference between a data lake and a data vault? So again, that might just be a misnomer if we're trying to compare the two because these are really two different things. A data lake is a storage uh, and an integration paradigm right where you extract you load and then you transform it doesn't really talk much about the modeling how do you model data within the data lake now that's a different question all right but whereas a data vault is specifically a modeling technique all right so you can do modeling whether you're doing it in data lake or you're doing it in traditional data warehousing so those two are not really the same all right, so data vault is more of a modeling technique. So let's look at this diagram, which is very similar to what we saw before. All right, extract from the sources that organizations have. We load potentially into a data lake or maybe even a data warehouse that, that will be in this area. All right, just think about that as a storage archival layer. Now, we can always, and this is what we saw before, we can just do our data science and exploration right from the data lake. All right. 
we can just dump all these files and start doing our analysis from that data lake. And that might lead to something called the data swamp, right? Which is something you want to be aware of. A lot of organizations that have gone down the path of data lake have ended up with swarms and they're not so happy about it. So a data vault really is an intermediary between that data lake and that consumption. And it helps model that data in a specific format that makes it easy for consumption and provide some of the benefits that we saw here, like auditing, tracing of data, loading speed, and resilience to change. All right, so the data vault is more of a modeling technique. Now, there are lots and lots of modeling techniques out there. All right, you have the data vault is one. You have uh, uh, the star schemas, uh, snowflake, uh, uh, the third normal forms. There are different ways of modeling data. All right, but data vault is just one of uh, many other modeling techniques that are available out there, which you can use on your data lake. All right. There are people that might have a data lake and they try to model a star schema out of that using hive tables so that's possible right so then just to summarize a data vault is a modeling technique whereas a data lake is an integration pattern for integrating data now uh the history of uh, data vault modeling uh started in about the 60 with ef uh, code uh, coming up with the third normal form, which is again, the third normal form is just a modeling technique within traditional data warehouses. All right, be unknown and Ralph Kimball are some of the champions of uh, data warehouse concepts. Uh, uh, Kimball he talked about the star schema, which is a very popular modeling technique within database uh, data warehousing. And then in the 90s, um, the term data vault was, was conceived by Dan Listek. All right, and um, 2000, uh, data Vault uh, 1.0 was released, and in 2014, so kind of recent, Data Vault 2.0 has uh, been released. And you can actually, if you go into Google, and I recommend we, we all do this, if you search for Data Vault, there is a lot of literature uh, behind uh, the Data Vault uh, modeling technique. All right, even companies like Snowflake, you can see here, which has nothing to do with the data lake per se, but they can do data vault modeling on a snowflake environment. So it's just a modeling technique that cannot be tied to a data lake per se. All right. So Wikipedia and some of the definitions you can find here. I always encourage everyone to always check out other YouTube videos and YouTubers. Uh, there is great content and examples if you want to dive in deep to see if uh, data vault makes sense for your use case or for your organization. Uh, this channel I came across just dedicated to data vault uh has some videos which you can check out and as always when watching these videos you notice i have a really ai here and i can bookmark uh specific areas of these videos so i would recommend uh, you check it out uh and bookmark specific areas as you're watching this video or any other video on youtube and really ai is a chrome extension for free so just go to www.threely.com and you can grab that extension once you grab the extension, it shows up in your browser the way mine shows up here. And your experience is a Chrome extension. Your experience with YouTube would just be totally amazing from there. All right, that's it. Let's go back into we've seen the history of a data vault. Now, let's actually see what it, it might look like in practice. So again, uh, data vault is just a modeling technique out of many other modeling techniques. All right. And uh, uh, the, the one more common that a lot of people would know from the data warehousing world of Ralph Kimball and B. Imnon would be uh, the dimensional modeling, where you have a fact table and you have a bunch of dimensions out of the fact table. And those dimensions are linked back to the fact table by keys. All right. So the fact table really shouldn't have any uh, dimension, depending on if you... Um, uh, directly built into the fact table, just keys that link out to the dimension tables. So this is just a rough idea of what a, a dimensional modeling is. All right. But the data vault uh, builds on that. It takes it to a, the, uh, a new level. And so these are some of the characteristics of a data vault. So instead of a master table in the third number form, uh, it adds a hub and a satellite. And here are the definition of what a hub and a satellite is. All right, so a satellite are the complete source tables that contain descriptive information and time attributes so we can uh, track changes 
and do point in time analysis. Time is a very important concept within uh, the data vault modeling. And then your hubs are, uh, this contains the business keys and any metadata, nothing descriptive is written uh, to the hub. So going back here, instead of transactional tables, we add link tables and satellites. Uh, instead of joins between master uh, tables, we add link tables. So this is the characteristic of a, of a data vault modeling. Again, just a modeling technique. Uh, I tend to believe that data vault, uh, this, the image is from the source. I tend to believe that data vault as a modeling technique might result in a lot of tables. But the, the, the thing about it, and this is what proponents will say, is it gives you more flexibility to add to your model over time without having to go recreate tables or drop tables or and, and, and all of that. All right. So here, the same thing modeled within the dimensional model. Uh, this is the same model within a data vault. All right. So here we have one fact table, four dimension tables. All right. You can notice in data vault, you would have uh, um, a, how many hub tables? Um, your customer hub, which kind of match your customer dimension. You have your other hub, which matches the other team. Uh, you have your product um, and the product hub. All right. And you have your product hub. Now, what happened to this other day team? It's kind of been taken into, uh, moved into some of these uh, satellite tables. So I'm not going to go into the details of this. You can, you know, uh, read some more literature to practice how to model within data vault. But again, the key characteristic is to allow easy change and evolution of your model and data uh, over time. That's really the promise of uh, data vault modeling. So now to summarize this and bring it all together, the verdict, what is a data vault versus a data lake, which is the premise of this uh, presentation, it's really a missed question. It's a misnomer as always with some of these questions. A data vault is not comparing itself to a data lake. These are apples and oranges, right? If we go with the integration pattern of extract, load, and transforming of data, which is the ELT that a lot of organizations are doing, uh, a data vault simply supplements or augments or work in tandem, work in synergy with a data lake or with data lakes. So you can do a data lake, build a data lake and make use of it without a data vault, but we can also include that data vault in the middle as the modeling layer on top of whatever data we dumped into the data lake. And once you model in data vault, it might, it might or might not, depending on, on your perception of it or your use case, make it easy for downstream consumption. So the idea of whether to include data vault modeling in your data lake just really boils down to what is your specific use case and what are your expectations of this data and the evolution over time. All right. So again, data vault is a modeling technique. There are many others, like we mentioned, dimensional modeling with uh, three, uh, third number form, uh, star schema, and, and all of that. All right. Data vault is another one. You can literally do dimensional modeling uh, in here on your data lake. No one is going to you know, prevent you from doing that. There's no technical challenge. There's no, nothing preventing you from doing uh, dimensional modeling on your consumption layer within your data lake. But data vault seems to be very popular. There are a lot of proponents for it. But again, it just depends on what you're trying to do. So the verdict here. This comparison is a misnomer. Data vault don't compete with data lakes. Data vault complement data lakes for better analytics. All right. So data vault plus data lake would be the better question to ask. Do you need a data vault in addition to your data lake? Not it's not one or the other. All right. It's more of do you need the both of them to work together? All right, guys. Thanks for joining for this presentation. Hopefully, this cleared out a couple of questions for you. If you've heard of the term a data vault or a data lake and maybe not sure which one is, hopefully this presentation has brought home uh, the points with what we've gone through and uh, enlightened on the concepts. Hopefully you can take this and do some more uh, discovery or some more uh, learning or research on your own to see if it fits uh, your specific needs. Now, if you have any questions, any more detailed questions, don't hesitate to jump into the comment section below. Leave that, uh, the questions, I'll be more than happy to check them out and to respond, maybe make a clarifying video 
or be clarified uh, in this case. All right. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate and I'm very thankful for all of you watching and sticking to the end. This means a lot. So like it, subscribe, share it with somebody that might get value. Uh, this has been through with today's presentation and I will see you in our next presentation.